Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. Recently, Yesu announced the upcoming release of their new FT710HF rig. This small form factor rig looks to be Yesu's new low-end SDR transceiver. I say looks like as this video is being released prior to the actual launch of the product, so no pricing was available. When I first heard of the announcement, my initial thought was that it looked like the form factor might be suitable for HF portable operations. Could the FT710 be the next great HF portable rig? I applied some critical thinking to this question. Going on the credible information released to this point, I have come up with the following thoughts. First, we need to address that many of the initial reactions to the FT710's announcement contain speculation. I will limit my points to factual information in order to paint a more realistic picture of the 710's potential to be the next great HF portable radio. For the sake of my rationale, I will limit my references to include only the Yesu website and the YouTube video posted by John Crook N9UPC of Yesu USA. I've placed the link to Mr. Crook's video in the description below. Here is what we know for certain regarding the FT710. The following points were made by Mr. Crook. The official product name is FT710 AESS. AESS is an acronym for Acoustic Enhanced Speaker System. The 710 is considered by Yesu to be a desktop radio. The 710 that is to be released in North America will be a 100 watt radio. There will not be a lower powered version for this market. The rig covers 160 to 6 meters. The 710 is not replacing a current model in Yesu's line. The 710 is an SDR radio, which according to N9UPC aligns most closely with the FT1200. The 710 features 256 MHz HRDDS for great receiving performance. The rig has full bandpass filtering with full capability for shift, notch, contour, and more. There is a 4.3 inch color display which will feature a 3D spectrum scope. A built-in antenna tuner with 100 memories is standard equipment. The rig will also be compatible with the external FC40 remote long wire tuner. An SD card slot will allow for the preserving of memories, settings, and more. Two USB ports are built in. A preset mode specific to FT8 operation is included. The size is smaller than the FTDX10. So that's what John N9UPC told us. Let's slide over to the yesu.com site to see what we can glean from there. I'll ignore any features already mentioned in N9UPC's video. While the specifications listed on the Yesu site are unfortunately incomplete, here are additional points that caught my eye. Bear in mind that I am considering if the rig would be suitable to field use, so I am looking for specific information related to that use case. Yesu used the word compact to describe the unit size. Standard equipment with the FT710 is the SP40 speaker. The dimensions are 9.4 inches by 3.1 inches by 9.7 inches. And the weight is 9.92 pounds. So those are the known attributes of the FT710. Thank you for hanging in there with me as I listed those. We need those to try and determine how suitable the FT710 will be for portable operation. Given what we know already, by specifications alone, the FT710 seems like it would be an amazing rig to take outdoors. But I want to take you through a mental exercise as we explore what the 710 requires, in addition to the above, to prove worthy of being a field performer. I have come up with a list of characteristics that will help us understand what we need to know to establish any transceiver's suitability for this purpose. Number one, a rig that is to be used in the field has to be somewhat rugged. It must be constructed well enough to withstand a certain amount of abuse. It must be capable of being repeatedly packed, unpacked, and transported to and from the deployment location without sustaining physical damage. 
we can likely extrapolate a bit based on experience with other Yesu equipment. To this end, my current rigs include the FT-991A, the FT-891, the FT-897, and the FT-817. Of those, the 897 and 817 are older rigs, specifically designed for portable applications, and do not represent Yesu's current line's build quality. Now let's consider the FT-891. In his video, John N9UPC clearly stated that the FT-710 is not a mobile radio. The FT-891, on the other hand, is a mobile radio. You have to expect that a mobile radio is built to be more solid than one that is marketed as a base radio. So let's remove the FT-891 as a good comparison for the ruggedness of the 710. That brings us to the FT-991A. While I have not yet taken my 991A into the field, I will not hesitate to do so when the time is right. I will add the condition here that I take great care of my rigs when transporting them, so you might feel different as to the 991A's portable suitability. When looking at Yesu's site for the 991A, we see the rig is offered as a field radio. Since we see no such reference on the FT-710's page, the omission might indicate that the FT-710 is not built as sturdily as the 991A. The bottom line here is that we simply do not have enough information to ascertain whether the 710 is constructed to the standard we'd all like to see in a field rig. The next criteria I consider is the radio's physical size and weight. Is the rig compact and light enough to be conveniently packed and transported to an outdoor operating site? As mentioned, the FT-710's physical size is 9.4 inches by 3.1 inches by 9.7 inches. The 710 weighs in at 9.92 pounds. Compare this to the FT-897, which definitely meets the size and weight requirements for a portable transceiver. The 897 comes in at 7.87 inches by 3.15 inches by 10.3 inches and weighs 8.6 pounds. Since the FT-710 has an internal tuner, for a fair comparison to the FT-897, let's add the dimensions and weight of the FT-897's companion FC-30 external tuner. When I take my 897 into the field, the external FC-30 is always attached, so this is an appropriate inclusion. When the FC-30 is attached to the FT-897, the overall dimensions and weight of the 897 swell to 9.67 inches by 3.15 inches by 10.3 inches and 10.8 pounds of overall weight. This puts the FT-710 almost one pound lighter and slightly smaller in all dimensions than the 897 with the FC-30 attached. Using this information, we can conclude that the FT-710 meets the physical size and weight criteria for a field radio. Our third important characteristic of a portable rig is readability of the display in bright sunlight. As for the FT-710's display, this is something that only practical experience will uncover. On a rig like the 710, the outdoors readability is very important, as many of the functions are only accessible via the touchscreen. For this feature, we can only hope for the best. Moving down our portable rig checklist, many hams do not consider a rig to be field ready unless it has a built-in automatic antenna tuner. The FT-710 has one, but prospective buyers should be aware that there is a great likelihood the tuner will only resolve mismatches up to a 3 to 1 SWR. This is the type of internal tuner Yesu has been offering for many years now. It's fine for use with an off-center fed dipole or for extending the bandwidth of antennas that may not be resonant across the entire band for which they are designed. However, this type of tuner won't be much good for using antennas that are being used for bands they are not designed for, or G5 RVs. Finally, we get to one of the most important considerations for a portable HF transceiver. 
That's power consumption in receive mode. No specifications have been released yet regarding this measurement on the FT710. In fact, even if Yesu released the specification, there would be good reason to be suspicious. This is because we've seen in recent Yesu history that they have trouble correctly specifying accurate receiver mode current draw. Take the FT891, for example. Yesu declares on the spec sheet for this rig that the receive mode power consumption is 2 amps. This number is almost comically inaccurate, as the typical current draw on receive is approximately half that amount. But let's do a mental exercise to see if we can estimate where the FT710 might land with respect to receive mode current draw. Since we have no information on the receive current draw of the FT710, let's take a look at the published current draw specs for the SDR model one step up in Yesu's line. That model would be the FTDX10. The SDR FTDX10 has a published specification of a whopping 3 amps in receive mode with a signal present. Not surprisingly, word on the street is that the FTDX10 actually draws far less, anywhere from 2 to 2 and a quarter amps in receive mode. That's still a big number though. Having seen this, I suspect that the high receive current draw is a main reason Yesu is not positioning the FT710 as anything but a base radio. I'd like to quickly add I am only guessing. We may yet find out that the 710 has a much lower receive current draw. We'll just have to wait and find out. One factor which could counter a high receive current draw is the falling prices of higher capacity Life PO4 batteries. Concerns about high receive current draw could fade away if battery prices continue to fall. There is one last thought I have about the 710 as a field rig. As I mentioned earlier, the external SP40 speaker is included with the FT710. Does this mean there is no internal speaker in the 710? That seems radical to me, but so too is including an external speaker with an HF rig. Having to cart along a bulky external speaker with your field radio would be inconvenient at best. Again, we'll just have to wait and find out. Now you know what I am thinking with regard to the FT710. If the FT710 turns out to have a receive current draw much closer to 1 amp, I'll start getting excited about using one in the great outdoors. So what are your thoughts about the FT710 as a field radio? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. That's all for this time. I hope you've enjoyed this mental exercise. Now it's your turn. Get out of the shack, get outdoors, and get on the air. 7-3 from Tracy, VE3TWM.